Lord. Yeah, too. Bro. Sunday at two. Never, never run from the enemy. 
we confront the enemy. We confront him because of the authority we have. In Genesis 4, 7, before Cain killed Abel, God is talking to him. And God said to Cain, sin is crouching at your door. It's no small thing to be out there as a prey animal, a sheep. It's no small thing. That we would be wise, that we would be wise, that the meal did. So let's flip the page. Let's go on to blessed to be a blessing. Blessed to be a blessing. This is God's ideal. This is this is the walk of the believer. We are blessed to be a blessing. I am blessed to be able to stand so that I can stand for somebody else. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Blessed to be a blessing. Matthew 10, verse 8. Jesus says to the twelve, He commissions them. He says to go out into the communities, into the villages, and He says to heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, and that, that includes all skin uh, uh, diseases, issue of skin, drive out demons, and he says, freely you have received, freely give. Hallelujah. We are blessed so that we can make it. We are blessed so that someone else can make it through us. I have frequently thought and realized that very few people make it financially in the beginning of their young life as a married couple or however. Very few people make it without help from either parents, or an uncle, or somebody, an aunt, a grandparent, right? Are you with me? Very few people, we did not make it on our own, except the help of an uncle, who got us into our first house. Very few people make it on their own. I would hazard to say, very few people here this morning have made it as far as you have in the Lord, particularly your beginning journey without somebody coming alongside and saying, can I help you? Yeah. Freely we have received, freely give. Okay. We are blessed to be a blessing. What does it mean to be blessed? Let's look at what it does not mean first. Blessing has little or nothing to do with believing in the existence of God. Do I have your attention? Somebody said once, if you want to get people's attention, say something radical. Like, today we're going to talk about sex. Do I have your attention? The blessing of God has little, 
if not nothing to do with believing in the existence of God. When Eve was tempted, she said, God said, don't do it. She believed in the existence of God. When they killed Jesus, the religious rulers, Pilate himself, they knew who Jesus was. They believed in his existence. The disciples that were with Jesus for three years and did these miraculous things, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, heal those with skin disease issues. They believed in Jesus and his existence. And they failed. The blessing of God has little, if anything, to do with believing in his existence. And I can hear somebody say, okay, I give up. I always knew this was hard. I always knew I'd never make it. I quit. Don't quit it. Hear me out. Oh, <laughs> what does it mean to be blessed? What does that word mean? It means happiness, delight, enrich. Satisfied and bliss. That's what the word blessed means. And this is our portion. But I hear someone saying, but it doesn't work. It's not working for me. I've heard it said, people have said this to me, not from here, but I don't doubt that that thought is represented here. I've heard it said numerous times. I remember, and I've shared this story before, when I was in construction in Chilliwack doing a reno in this lady's house, she had some kind of a scripture on her wall and said, oh, you're a scripture. She just flared up like an angry hen and said, I'm really mad at God. He killed my husband. <laughs> Didn't work for her simply because of ignorance of truth and scripture. There's many people out there who will say, it doesn't work for me. It works for them, but it doesn't work for me. And I actually was once there myself many years ago in my pursuit for truth. <laughs> to be blessed. And this is for you. It's to be happy to be delighted in the Lord, to be enriched, satisfied, to be blissful. How do I get from here to there? How can I be blessed so that I can go up to somebody and bless them? How can I be so free that I can go to somebody and say, I can help you. to a police officer, to a doctor, to a psychiatrist, to your nasty neighbor. I can help you. How do we get from here to there so that we can confidently look anybody in the eye and say, I can help you. This is the secret. The secret is so simple, it's difficult to grasp. The way we transition from here 
to there, a place of desperation to a place of satisfaction, is through relationship. Let me explain. There's many kinds of relationships. There are work environment relationships. You have the option to shut down, keep your stuff to yourself, keep them at a distance. You're just there to make X number of dollars, so you've got more money left at the end of the month than month. There are neighborhood relationships. They live over there, they live over here, they keep their stuff to themselves, I keep my stuff to myself, we wave if we have to, if they're nice or friendly. There's marriage relationships, there's parent-child relationships, there's friendship relationships, there's a church family relationship. These relationships are different. They're founded and fueled by love. In these relationships, there are no options to get along. There are no second choices. There are no second best. It's either love or it's not. In our relationship with God, it's this kind of relationship. There is no other choice. So, you and I, we have stuff. This is important. This is counseling stuff. If this doesn't apply to you, you can learn something from it. If we don't deal with our stuff, tell me what happens in relationships that are love-based relationships if we don't deal with our stuff and we do our stuff in the relationship. It's like a fly in the ointment. It's like a fox in the hen house. It's like a mosquito at a beach party. Our stuff is destructive. God is the most amazing, wonderful, incredible, loving person one could ever meet. How is it that we find ourselves saying, but it doesn't work for me? I have often looked at couples who have experienced divorce or individuals, and I look at the one that I know, and I think, oh, this is weird. Like, why would anybody not want to live with that person is so amazing. But yet it happens. How is it that God is so incredibly amazing and yet there's failure in relationship? And somebody will say, God forgive them. It doesn't work for me. I hazard to say it's because of stuff. We have stuff like poor self-image. You say, yeah, God, I'll, uh, I'll do this, but I got some furniture. Poor self-image. I'll do it, God, but I got some more furniture. I have a bitterness this year.
I'll do it, God, but if you don't mind, I uh, got some trust issues. And I don't trust you either. I mean, why would I? I've never met anybody I can trust. I'll do it, God. I'll walk with you, but I've really been hurt in the past. And I'm not letting go. I haven't met anybody yet who hasn't hurt me somehow. I'll do it, God, but... I'll do it, God, but... And we have this array of furniture that we have furnished our relationship with. And God says, hey, I'm into this. I'm into this, but we need to talk. We need to talk. We need to talk. As in any relationship, any love-based relationship, if this remains, the relationship will either end, end in divorce, or it will be a long-lasting, sorry, dysfunctional relationship. Whether it's with God or with fellow human beings. <coughs> so I come back to my point. We are blessed to be a blessing. Incredible potential. Incredible potential. And the stuff we bring into our relationship, if this remains, we will find ourselves saying, that we would be reminded of our incredible position that we have as children of God. Not unlike what Jesus said to his disciples, go, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have skin issues, cast out demons. Our calling is not unlike that. It's much broader than that. It includes that. It's an incredible calling we have. Not just that we are called unto, but that we are called out of, out of. The darkness, the confusion, that this stuff can be out of our life. That it, it just isn't a part of the relationship anymore. It just doesn't exist. It once was here. This is what I used to be. <laughs> but this is not who I am today. I've been set free. I've been set free. And so freely I have received and been set free that I can go to somebody and say, hey, I can help you. I can help you. I can help you. This is such an easy truth and reality that is hard to grasp. There are so many failed relationships out there of every kind. Husband, wife, parent, child, friend to friend. 
church member to church member so many failed relationships because we don't want to get rid of the furniture in the relationship. This is so easy, it's hard to grasp. The good news is, in our testimony, that the children of God carry is that freely we have received, we've been set free. We've been set free. We're free. We're healed. We are not who we were in the recent past and the distant past. I've asked a very good friend, Dan, if he'd share a little bit of something. with this 
need, not just a sense of I should do with this need, and overcame me that I should pray for her. And I just kept hearing this pray for her. And uh, at the same time, at the very same time, I heard this voice of talking for years and years and years in my head that would say that you're not sufficient, you're not good, look what you're doing wrong, you're doing this thing. And this thing that I fought with all the time, now there, it was that false lie, that, that untruth that always talked to me in my head and said to me at that same time that I was praying and weeping, said, what are you doing? You're not supposed to be doing this. It was loud. Not as loud as the prayers that were in my head, the voice that was telling me to pray, but it was like a question, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? And that was the voice of the enemy. And right then, through all that, I realized, huh, that's that voice that was talking to me, lying to me for so many years. It just got caught. So, uh, I mean, and that overjoyed me just, you would have no idea until today's case. In my head. And those little things that happen when we stand, and, and we don't get the spirit in ourselves because Father God loves us. You know, we're his children with the children, they're not perfect. Um, but we try, as long as we stand, I mean, there are things that will happen in our life that will just pull us away. And so I just thought I wanted to share what I thought would have been an impossibility in my life, an absolute impossibility in where the grace of God can stand and brought me to. And, uh, you know, it's not even hard to share in front of a family, which I had my eyes closed most of the time. But, and that's how I roll, I guess. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to share that and say, you know, hallelujah, amen, God is so great. We just have to stand and never say it's not working. Because I've said that, and that's a lie. Amen.
We're going to pray that together. Do you agree with me? Do you agree with me? Once more, do you agree with me? Yes. Hallelujah. Father, we come in your name, the name of Jesus Christ. And we can't stand at times when we don't experience a greater measure of love because only one thing remains, your love. Sometimes everything else is not remaining. We're, we're questioning or there's confusion. We want to stand. We want to stand for you, but we feel like we're buckling under oppression alone. And this morning, Holy Spirit, would you just move over everyone that's seated here that the love of God will touch us to a greater measure than we've had before. What we had, we had. But from here on, we work and walk on in a new measure of the love of God. Come, Holy Spirit. Impart, baptize us with a greater measure. Immerse us. Immerse our hurting hearts, our confusion, our spirits. Immerse us, Holy Spirit. Immerse us with your love. So that we can stand. Because the love is not comparable to circumstances. The love is not comparable to prayers that answer. The love is not compared to confusion or lack. The love is supernatural. It's beyond. It's beyond. And so we receive that love. We receive it right now in Jesus. Give it to us. It was not desperate. We're desperate. Give it to this family, Lord, that we can walk in those kind of relationships with your love, not our figured out love, but a new love and your love. Baptize us. Immerse. Immerse. Totally immerse us. Immerse us. In Jesus' name. Bless the people. Bless our afternoon in our service today and our other church building. Well, Lord, that we can be a blessing to that family. That we can give them now a new measure of love. That it comes from you, not ourselves. It comes from you, Holy Spirit. Which is a mercy and be aware that this week we will call upon that new love of God in our hearts and spirits. In Jesus'